majesty, worship his majesty. Unto Jesus be all glory, power, and praise. Majesty, kingdom authority, flow from his throne unto his own. His anthem praise, so exalt, lift up and high the name of Jesus. Come magnify, now glorify Christ Jesus the King. Well, majesty, worship his majesty, Jesus who died, now glorified, King of all kings. Jesus who died, now glorified, King of all kings. Oh, hallelujah. Welcome to the reading of the precious Word of God, the Word that will never change. It will never fade away. It is powerful. It rules and runs the universe. It gives you and I breath to be alive. The wonderful Word of God, our guide, our love, our heart, Jesus on every page. I mean, we could think of a thousand more reasons why to read this morning. And so, that wonderful little chorus that I began with on this July 27, July 27, it was written by a wonderful pastor. I'm sure many of you recognize his name, Jack Hayford. And he wrote it, came out of him from the Holy Ghost while they, he and Anna, his wife, were riding in the car down the road. And he, he said, Anna, quick, quick. <clears throat> he was driving. Anna, quick, get a piece of paper and write it down, write it down as it comes out. And so she did. And here we have this wonderful, wonderful praise song. It's one of my favorites. Well, on this July 27th, y'all, we have such exciting scriptures to read and digest and enjoy this morning and so many of it I just, well all of it applies right to today for the lord says do not be afraid do not be discouraged for the battle is not yours but the lord's the battle is his it's a good scripture for me because I have a tendency to take things on onto me and war and fight. And I need to be reminded the battle is the Lord's. And we already read the last pages, so we know we win. So it might look like we're losing a few battles, but we win the war. We win because he is the chief commander, right? Who? Now, I don't know about you, but those words really encourage my heart. All right, today, y'all, we will be reading from Beit Divrei Hayamin, 2 Chronicles chapter 19, verse 1. 2 Chronicles. If you'd like to flip there, and if you need to go to the front of your Bible and look up what page it is, do it. Do it. Save yourself some time. Don't just flip around and get all aggravated. <laughs> Second Chronicles 19. Then Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, returned safely to his house in Jerusalem. Remember, he went out with Ahab. And Yehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, went out to meet him and said, to King Jehoshaphat, should you help the wicked and love those who hate the Lord? It was kind of risky that he went with him. But he came home alive 
and the enemies died. Therefore, the wrath of the Lord is upon you. Nevertheless, good things are found in you in that you have removed the wooden images from the land and have prepared your heart to seek God. Oh, let's take that in. That's why we're here, isn't it? To prepare our heart to seek God. So Jehoshaphat dwelt at Jerusalem, and he went out again among the people from Beersheba to the mountains of Ephraim, and he brought them back to the Lord God of their fathers. Oh, wow. He is about the evangelism business. <clears throat> he brought them back. And then he set judges in the land throughout all the fortified cities of Judah, city by city, and said to the judges, Take heed to what you are doing, for you do not judge for man, but for the Lord who is with you in the judgment. And, oh my goodness, does that not describe the problems we are having today. Wicked judges, put, I mean, sought out for their wickedness and put in place. We had a president, and we have a president, who put, started to put righteous ones in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we need to pray today, I'm really impressed, for our court system, for the decisions of judgment they are being made today. Some of them are destroying our country. Now therefore, let the fear of the Lord be upon you. That's where it starts. That's what we need. So let it start with you and me. The fear of the Lord upon you and me. Take care and do it. He says to these judges, for there is no iniquity with the Lord our God, no partiality, nor taking of bribes. And I highly suspect from a lot of things I read that partiality and bribes are all too common in our world today. Moreover, in Jerusalem, for the judgment of the Lord and for controversies, Jehoshaphat appointed some of the Levites and priests and some of the chief fathers of Israel when they returned to Jerusalem, and he commanded them. Now, this wasn't a suggestion. He commanded them, saying, Thus you shall act in the fear of the Lord, faithfully and with a loyal heart. Oh, that's what we need today. Loyal hearts to the Lord. <clears throat> Not swayed by man. But we won't know how to do that if we don't read his word and have his word in our heart. Right? So that's why we're here. Welcome, each and every one. Receive all that you can today so that you can be faithful and have a loyal heart. Whatever case comes to you from your brethren who dwell in their cities, whether of bloodshed or offenses against law or commandment against statutes or ordinances, you shall warn them lest they trespass against the Lord. And that's what's happening today. People are living and making all their decisions some of them not even knowing. They're making terrible decisions that go against the word of the Lord. Lest they trespass against the Lord and wrath come upon you and your brethren. Do this and you will not be guilty. And take notice, Amaria, the chief priest is over you in all matters of the Lord. And Zebediah, the son of Ishmael, the ruler of the house of Judah, for all the king's matters. Also, the Levites will be officials before you. Behave courageously. 
and the Lord will be with the good. Now, it's going to take courage, isn't it? It did back then. To bring people back from the Lord, they are the ones that are the loudest. They go after you. They have no shame. That's what we're seeing today. And unfortunately, too many righteous are becoming weak and giving in to them. So, today's scriptures are all geared to cause you to gain strength, to be courageous, to be brave, to recognize the Lord is with you. We move along to chapter 20. It happened after this that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others with them besides the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. And then some came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Syria, and they are in Hazazon Tamar, which is En Gedi. Oh, I picture that. I've been to En Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared, feared the thing the Lord is trying to say, don't do. He's trying to say that to you and me. And Jehoshaphat feared, but he did what he should. He set himself to seek the Lord. When we fear, run to the Lord and seek him and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. Oh, that would be the most wonderful idea for America. Let's you and I begin to start it. Let's honestly think about that and begin to take times of fasting. Forget a meal. You'll live, just drink more water. So Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord. See, now he's got everybody asking and coming together. That's what's so important, gathering together. You know, that is such a beautiful thing for this little morning reading. All you wonderful people, familiar names, we are gathering together to seek help from the Lord. And from all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. And then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court. He's coming, he's gonna set up some honest courts and instruct them not to be partial, not to take bribes, to bring forth decisions that are okay with the Lord. And he said, listen to this beautiful prayer. Oh, Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? And in your hand, is there not power and might so that no one is able to withstand you? Are you not our God who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend forever? And they dwell in it and have built you a sanctuary in it for your name, saying, and this is why they did, because this is what they said when they built it, if disaster comes upon us, sword, judgment, pestilence, pestilence. Oh, you mean like COVID? Pestilence or famine. We will stand before this temple and in your presence for your name is in this temple and cry out to you in our affliction and you will hear and save. Got that? We can do that too. And now, here are the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whom you would not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt. But they turned from them 
and did not destroy them. And now look, here they are, rewarding us by coming to throw us out of your possession, which you have given us to inherit. Oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us, nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Let's get our eyes on him for the multitude, particularly one huge nation we know about who's crowding down, threatening us. Now all Judah, with their little ones, their wives, and their children, stood before the Lord. And then look what the Lord did, because they gathered together and did that. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Yehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Yeel, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, in the midst of the assembly. A prophetic word's coming. And he said, listen, all you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you, King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you. Here we go. Here's this precious scripture. Do not be afraid, nor dismayed, because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. And the Lord gives a word to say, and I'm going to show you tomorrow. I'm going to make these words come alive tomorrow. Tomorrow, go down against them. They will surely come up by the ascent of Ziz. Oh, he even tells them which way they're coming. Hallelujah. And you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Yeroel. You will not need to fight in this battle. <laughs> He's saying go down against them. You're not going to need to fight. That took faith to believe that. Position yourselves. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and Yerushalayim. Do not fear nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them for the Lord is with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. Worshiping the Lord. Now, on their part, it's going to take the faith to go, isn't it? I mean, the faith to go. I mean, they know what kind of a multitude is there. Vicious, evil people ready to kill them. And then the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of the Korahites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with voices loud and high, loud and high. I mean, what are you going to do about it when you're given a word like that? What we can do, and what we can do is praise the Lord. So they rose early in the morning, and they went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Now see, it's a process. You believe and then the thing that you're trying to accomplish, that you want to see happen, as you believe, 
little signs start coming along, don't they, to establish you. Just about the time you want to be dismayed, along comes some little something. Somebody says something or you see something and faith grows. It starts like a mustard seed, tiny, and then it grows. And you shall be established. Believe his prophets and you shall prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness. How about that? Praising the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army. He's not saying, you guys with your bows and arrows go here. There are not military instructions happening. There is praise and worship happening. That's the kind of battle we want to do, isn't it? <laughs> and they went out before the army and they were saying, Praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Now when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. Who did the battle? The Lord. For the people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir. Look at that. They got ugly with those that were with them, started killing them, to utterly kill and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they helped to destroy one another. You see, God can take a mind of a person. We're seeing it today. Cause it to be reprobate, pitiful, can't tie one sentence together, gets in the middle, uh, er, mm, uh, and takes off in another direction. You get what I'm saying? He, can, he caused these people to turn on one another. So when Judah came to a place overlooking the wilderness, they looked toward the multitude, and there were their dead bodies fallen on the earth. No one had escaped. No one escaped the destruction. The Lord had them kill each other. Can you imagine, can you imagine Judah standing there going, look at that, look at that. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away their spoil, they found among them an abundance of valuables on the dead bodies and precious jewelry, which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away. And they were three days gathering the spoil because there was so much. I mean, imagine that. They had courage and kept a good attitude to be able to go and strip those dead bodies of all of their jewelry and everything. You, I would have been the last one to go do that, I think. But it was called, This is the Victory. And on the fourth day, fourth day, they assembled in the valley of Berakah. Berakah, which means blessing. For there they blessed the Lord. Therefore, the name of that place was called the Valley of Berakah blessing until this day and then they returned every man of judah and jerusalem with jehoshaphat in front of them to go back to jerusalem with joy for the lord had made them rejoice over their enemies the lord caused them to rejoice 
So they came to Yerushalayim with stringed instruments and harps and trumpets to the house of the Lord. And the fear of God was on all the kingdoms of those countries when they heard that the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel. Oh, wouldn't I love to see a miracle battle like that happen today? And all of our enemies have to have this kind of a testimony? And then the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet, for his God gave him rest all around. Now, y'all, my heart wants to say, that's it. That's it. We're reading what America needs to do right now. Right now. So I want to encourage all of you to pray for our military. Pray for our military. Many voices are saying this whole mess Looks like it's only going to be solved by the military. Let's pray. We are in battle prayer formation this morning, y'all, okay? So Jehoshaphat was king over Judah. He was 35 years old when he became king, and he reigned 25 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Azubah, the daughter of Shilhi, and he walked in the way of his father, Hassa, and did not turn aside from it, doing what was right in the sight of the Lord. He did was what was right, and God fought the battles. And if you look back on America's history, we can see that that's happened many, many times. That's why the people of the world look at us as the greatest country. They are, they, are not, they are not trying to flee to other countries. They, they want to all flee to America. I mean, we have more people wanting to do that than we can possibly handle. He walked in the way of his father, Asa. Nevertheless, the high places were not taken away. For as yet, the people had not directed their hearts to the God of their fathers. So, see, even after all that, and we see that happening all the time, to try to keep all the people directed towards the Lord is the constant evangelistic responsibility, I believe, of the church, of the church. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoshaphat, first and last, indeed, are, are, they are written in the book of Yehu, the son of Hanani, which is mentioned in the book of the kings of Israel. And after this, Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, slipped a little. Oh, it's a good lesson for me. you got to watch yourself carefully in your older years. He allied himself with Ahaziah, king of Israel, who acted very wickedly. And he allied himself with him to make ships to go to Tarshish. And they made the ships in Ision Geber. But Eleazar, the son of Dodava of Merashah, prophesied against Jehoshaphat, saying, because you have allied yourself with Ahaziah, the Lord has destroyed your works. And then the ships were wrecked so that they were not able to go to Tarshish. How about that one? I bet that straightened him up. We don't read that, but we have read the true heart of the man, haven't we? All right, y'all. I mean, was that not amazingly wonderful for what we are living, you and me, today? Amazing. 
Let's take all that seriously. I highly encourage you <clears throat> to read that whole Old Testament passage again. Second Chronicles 19 and 20. And have a pen and underline. Make notes. Turn down the corner. Make this available because it appears to be right on for today. All right, let's move along to some more right on from Paul in the book of Romans, chapter 10, picking up with verse 14. Romans 10, 14. And this is so good. And here again, these questions are like a process. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? You can't believe in somebody or something you haven't heard about. And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? That's what needs to happen continually. As it is written from Isaiah 52, verse 7, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace. Oh, check out Kathy's graphics. I mean, her graphics are astoundingly beautiful today. Thank you, Kathy. And as I read that sentence right there, I visually see the graphic Kathy found. The picture is taken of the bottom of these beautiful feet walking on their way to preach the gospel of peace. Oh, go look at it. It's so beautiful. And now we have a little quote from Nahum. Nahum, chapter 1, verse 5. Who bring glad tidings of good things. That's what the evangelist, the preacher, does. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says in chapter 53, verse 7, Lord, who has believed our report? So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You see, that is a process also. Line upon line. Precept upon precept. We do it daily. And it builds. And we move forth, okay? Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, indeed. <clears throat> and here's a quote from Psalm 19, verse 4. Their sound has gone out to all the earth and their words to the ends of the world. <clears throat> and in our day and age, <clears throat> pardon me, <clears throat> that's we, what we are after accomplishing. Now we have all these modern technologies, like what we're using, what we're doing. Here I am in Charleston using my cell phone. And you and I are enjoying the Word of God together where all you live. Amazing. We can do it now. We can finish to the whole world. But I say, did Israel not know? First, Moshe, Moses says, from Deuteronomy 32, 21, I will provoke you to jealousy by those who are not a nation. I will move you to anger by a foolish nation. And he had purposes in that, didn't he? But Isaiah is very bold and says in Isaiah chapter 65, verse 1, I was found by those who did not seek me. I was made manifest to those who did not ask for me. But to Israel, he says a little later in Isaiah 65, verse 2, all day long, 
I have stretched out my hands to a disobedient and contrary people. I see some of that happening today. I see it in Israel. Now we go to chapter 11. Chapter 11. I say then, has God cast away his people? Certainly not. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. Paul says, no, here's, here's my identity. God has not cast away his people, whom he foreknew. Or do you not know what the scripture says of Elijah? How he pleads with God against Israel, saying, <clears throat> this is what <clears throat> Elijah had to say about it. <clears throat> Lord, they have killed your prophets and torn down your altars, and I alone am left, and they seek my life. Where Elijah stood, that's what he saw. But look what the Lord answered. But what does the divine response say to him? He said, the Lord says, no, I have reserved for myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal. So see, Satan wants to come along and give you a lion report. And sometimes we feel totally alone, don't we? Just totally alone. But you're not alone. You're not alone. He has saved millions who live today. Even so then, at this present time, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. We are coming by grace now. And if by grace, <clears throat> then it is no longer of works. You can't work for it. It's a free gift by grace. Otherwise, grace is no longer grace. But if it is works, it is no longer grace. Otherwise, work is no longer work. <laughs> How about that statement? What then? Paul says, well, what then? Israel has not obtained what it seeks, but the elect have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Just as it is written in Deuteronomy 29, verse 4. Oh, my goodness. Is this what we see today? God has given them a spirit of stupor. Eyes that they should not see and ears that they should not hear to this very day. Is that the problem that we see today? They don't seem to hear it. They don't seem to see it. And in many of them, you can, you can just say that. You want to say, it's like they're stupid. They have a spirit of stupor. And then David comes along and says in Psalm 69, verses 22 and 23, <clears throat> let their table become a snare and a trap, a stumbling block and a recompense to them. Let their eyes be darkened so that they do not see and bow down their back always. So you see, the Lord is working in many ways that we look and we, we go, Okay, what's going on? I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? Certainly not. But through their fall to provoke them to jealousy, salvation has come to the Gentiles. And see, the, the Jews have a hard time with that. They don't want to hear about this, Jesus. They don't want to say that you, you have the word of God. You have their Torah. Some of them. But you see, 
God is provoking them, stirring them up. Now, if their fall is riches for the world and their failure riches for the Gentiles, how much more their fullness. So God's going to use it all. Oh, what a relief. What a relief. <clears throat> now we move along to Psalm 21. Another Psalm of David given to the chief musician. Psalm 21. The king shall have joy in your strength, O Lord, and in your salvation how greatly he shall rejoice. You have given him his heart's desire and have not withheld the request of his lips. <clears throat> Selah. Stop and meditate upon that. For you meet him with the blessings of goodness. You set a crown of pure gold upon his head. He asked life from you and you gave it to him. Length of days forever and ever. His glory is great in your salvation. Honor and majesty you have placed upon him. For you have made him most blessed forever. You have made him exceedingly glad with your presence. For the king trusts in the Lord. And through the mercy of the Most High, he shall not be moved. Well, he shall not be moved. No, he shall not be moved. You shall not be moved. No, I shall not be moved. Your hand will find all your enemies. Your right hand will find those who hate you. You shall make them as a fiery oven in the time of your anger. You got that? Some people are walking a path that's going to end up in a fiery oven. The Lord shall swallow them up in his wrath and the fire shall devour them. <clears throat> their offspring you shall destroy from the earth and their descendants from among the sons of men, for they intended evil against you. They devised a plot which they are not able to perform. Therefore, you will make them turn their back. You will make ready your arrows on your string toward their faces. Be exalted, O Lord, in your strength. We will sing and praise your power. Oh my goodness, so powerful. And we wrap up today's reading, y'all, with Proverbs chapter 20, verses 4 through 6. Proverbs 20, 4 through 6. The lazy man will not plow because of winter. Oh, it's too cold out. Oh, the ground is so hard. Lazy. He will beg during harvest and have nothing. Oh, so many need to hear that. So many countries need to hear that. Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. Draw out that good counsel. Most men will proclaim each his own goodness. But who can find a faithful man? Who can find a faithful man? Sometimes you have to look long and hard. Just evil, 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 evil. And then, ah, here is a faithful man standing up, being bold. Speaking truth, spelling out the truth, talking truth, even though it makes the evil people furious and they do threats and they try to do a new plot. Keep speaking truth. Truth. 
truth. Let's pray. Father God, oh, how I thank you for your word this morning, Lord. <clears throat> A very timely word. Lord, <clears throat> we hold up Israel right, right first. We pray for them. We pray for their military, their IDF. We pray, Lord, for the Knesset. We pray for the people in charge. And Lord, we'd ask that you would use them mightily. We, we know you are. We know you're going to because you've allowed them to be there. And so, Lord, whatever your purposes are, help us to understand that we might pray in the right way. <clears throat> and Lord, that's when I, I praise you for my prayer language because Holy Spirit will use that prayer language to pray for things I don't even know about. Father, I hold up America to you. <clears throat> Lord, we, met, we read many wonderful things that can apply to America and apply to all of us living at this time. And so, Father God, I'd ask that Holy Ghost would reveal those things to each and every one of us. Stir our hearts up. I hold up our military, Lord. I hold up our military. I'd ask you to cause our military men and all of the brass, all of the brass, to not give in. Not give in. Not give in to bribes. Not give in. Not be chicken and cowards. But to stand up boldly, Lord, for what's right. Stand up for righteousness' sake. It never will be the most popular thing. Lord, cause them to do with the military what is right. But they all have taken a pledge to give their lives to defend. Lord, we'd ask <clears throat> that you would put a strong spirit of defense. We come against any spirits of stupor that would like to come upon our military. We refuse you in the name of Yeshua Mashiach. We cover, we speak out loud, we cover our military from top brass to the lowliest soldier with the blood of Jesus. We ask for protection on them, Lord, as they guard all over this world in every country. Protect each and every one, Lord. Cause them to do what's right. Cause them not to give in to bribes, to evil things, to laziness. Cause them to stay strong. And by that strength, I mean strong in you. Cause a great revival of Holy Ghost to blow across our military, across our government. Oh, Holy Ghost. Blow strongly all over Washington, D.C. today. Blow strongly across every governor of every state, every political body. Father God, turn us, turn us to you. Lord, I'd ask you would hear the, the private prayers of all of your sons and daughters here, all of the prayers that they are saying for loved ones, for family, to be healed, to be delivered, to come to salvation, marriages and homes to be healed and come together. We come against this plague of diseases, plague, many diseases, name the disease, name all the diseases you can. And we say, we rebuke them to torment the people of America and the people of this world in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and all God's people continued with their own prayers. I say a hearty amen.
<laughs> I love you all. God bless your day. Bye-bye.